Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to go ahead and take a look at VQ mismatch in the operating room. Now obviously this applies to outside the operating room as well, but some of you are going to be anesthesiologists or are anesthesiologists and it's good to have a solid understanding of this as it's going to relate to a lot of the pathologies that we're going to talk about in our pathology video section. So under normal circumstances, and I know you've seen this diagram a thousand times as a medical student, probably more as a resident, under normal circumstances, oxygen comes into our alveoli. Oxygen, oxygen, and we have venous blood coming from the right side of the heart here in blue, and it's flowing this way, and it has lots of CO2 but no oxygen, and oxygen is gonna go ahead and flow in as CO2 flows out so that it can be exhaled. And so as a result, we get an exchange in, again, normal alveoli, normal blood flow, normal tissue. CO2 goes out into the alveoli to be then exhaled. And oxygen comes in and gets put into the blood to be pumped out from the left side of the heart to the rest of the body. Normal, basic physiology that hopefully we at least now have a good grasp on. So now shunting. If you take nothing else from this video, understand that shunting is blood flow without aeration. So the problem is here. There is no oxygen getting into this part of the lung. And as a result, as CO2 blood comes through, it goes into the alveoli. If the alveoli isn't just completely compressed, there's nowhere for it to go. It goes back in and it continues to flow to the left side of the heart to be pumped out to the body. Now, remember that the alveoli for whatever pathology may be completely collapsed, in which case it doesn't even enter into the alveoli and go back out. It just goes straight through from the left side to the right side. Now, mind you, we're discussing intrapulmonary shunts here. There is other types of shunting that will be discussed later in other videos. But for the sake of this video, shunting here is blood flow with no oxygenation. So now you're asking what kind of pathologies would lead to shunting or are shunting. So one, pneumothorax. As you collapse the lung, as the alveoli all gets collapsed, the area of it decreases, sometimes even to nothing, to the point where it's not expanded at all, and the blood vessels that wrap around it can't participate in gas exchange because as the alveoli collapse, you can't move oxygen into them to move into the blood in exchange for CO2. Atelectasis, very similar concept. As the alveoli all kind of collapse, they cannot participate in gas exchange because you can't get oxygen in to then put into the blood in exchange for CO2. Something you may all come across at some point would be maybe pneumonia or pulmonary edema. Why? Same kind of idea. I'm going to draw this in purple. As the alveoli fills with either fluid or if you have intraalveolar hemorrhage or just pus and junk from inflammation from the pneumonia, oxygen cannot really pass through it so well even if it's not even if the blockage isn't here oxygen gets into the alveoli it can't get through this layer to get into the blood and as a result you can develop pulmonary shunting so i hope that this is pretty clear what a shunt is it's again blood flow without the ability to get oxygen into that area or air into that area so now dead space if shunting is the inability to get air into the alveoli, but blood is okay, dead space is the exact opposite, where the problem is getting blood flow to a given space, despite good oxygen getting into those alveoli in that area. As a result, you can't actually move oxygen into the blood because there's no blood there to get it into. So this here doesn't really exist. So in this case, it is aeration or oxygenation without blood flow. And just like the other part, we're going to briefly talk about some examples. So one would be, say, cardiogenic shock. As you cannot pump blood across 
each alveoli because the heart really isn't pumping so well or major heart failure, you're effectively causing dead space to occur because there's no blood flow across some of your alveoli. PE or an air embolus may also cause because what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and clump up one of your pulmonary arteries or one of the branching vessels or the main pulmonary trunk, which completely cuts off all blood supply to your alveoli and to your pulmonary vasculature. Hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Pulm vasoconstriction. And this is something that's going to get its own video. But hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction causes the lumen of your blood vessel to go from this to this. And as your blood vessel lumen becomes narrower, you have increased resistance and as a result, decreased blood flow. So again, I hope that this is very clear. Dead space is aeration without blood flow. Shunts are blood flow without aeration. And we talked about a couple of the examples and why they are what they are. Now, I do want to note a key feature of this is that CO2 is going to rise in these patients, not end tidal. End tidal CO2 is going to go down. End tidal CO2 will drop because you're not exchanging CO2 into the alveoli to be breathed out to the sensor. But your arterial CO2 is going to rise because, again, you're not exchanging. So rather than it going out to the sensor to be seen as end tidal, it's building up in your blood and that leads to a sharp rise in arterial CO2 and this can then as a result displace oxygen and cause patients to become hypoxic or hypoxemic rather. Now understanding this, understanding VQ matching and that having good matching meaning that your flow which is Q and your V which is your ventilation you have about equal amounts around each alveoli is important for understanding later pathology that we're going to talk about in other videos surrounding the perioperative course, be it intraoperative pneumothoraces, pulmonary emboli, venous air emboli, and other things that may happen, even atelectasis that happens during the case or postoperatively, and how to deal with them. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and it cleared up VQ mismatch as a base of physiology. If you have any questions, please feel free to write to us. If you're interested in getting involved, we'd love to hear from you and have you. Feel free to check us out on Instagram. Subscribe below and stay tuned for the next video.